Hey, hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is the crypto siege with another day in the life and the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Good morning, happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. Again, we in the crypto siege just want to say thank you so much. We are are grateful for each and every one of you to take the time to to come hang out with the crypto siege and support the channel we re- appreciate you guys very very much hope you're having an absolutely outstanding day today uh being around family and loved ones and enjoying some football and uh, enjoying enjoying one another as well so happy thanksgiving to each and every one of you i gotta tell you the market is, again is doing what the market does it's very very interesting fox business came out with their opus if you will kind of a timeline of events um, leading up to the lawsuit uh, with the uh, SEC versus Ripple. Very, very interesting uh, time uh, opus that they put out. Um, it was certainly not as hard hitting, I think, that most of us would have liked. Uh, it, it was, you know, pl- pretty, um, you know, uh, you know, just kind of stating, just stating facts, uh, but not really kind of leading or leaning in one direction or the other, which I think is, um, is fair um, coming from their, you know, kind of perspective or standpoint. But I do think like uh, John Deaton states, I do believe that um, there's enough there for to, to warn an independent investigation. So I hope that Congress, someone from Congress will, will really seriously look into the improprieties, the obvious improprieties that took place with giving Ethereum um, this free pass. And I just, I honestly believe that um, someone from Congress is going to take the lead on it. I really, I really, really do. Someone's going to kind of take the lead in, in, because the SEC is still operating in, in, in the gray area, still operating and in, in being very, very vague. And um, I think they're going to get called on it. I really, uh, I really, really do. Uh, we need to we need to reach out to our local Congress people and, and ask that an independent investigation um, um, be held. Right. We, we don't want to start this new fourth industrial revolution. Right. In this new asset, in this new financial system. We, we don't want to start it with this kind of uh, uh, nastiness. Right. Uh, that William Hinman and Jay Clayton obviously um participated in and um, surely realized what they were doing when they decided to not invite anyone from Ripple or uh, the executives to this to this quote unquote crypto summit. And they didn't invite anyone from the Ripple, they didn't invite anybody from um, the creators of the second cryptocurrency, right? So. Uh, I don't want to say creators, but the people who are, were involved in the XRP uh, ledger and XRP, the second digital asset that was created. And they went around them and they met with people from Ethereum at that summit, did not invite anyone from Ripple. Right? That speaks volumes in my, in my mind. That definitely speaks volumes. So guys, listen, we're going to get into um, the market and what the market is doing. I got bread up here because of the news about bread wallet company being acquired by Coinbase. I don't know if anyone's covered that, but that's interesting. I know we talked on the stream last night about why the, you know, why the six to 800% move (laughs) on the BRD wallet. And it was because of that. Coinbase acquired Bread. Now, I thought that the CEO of Bread was of the BRD wallet. I thought, maybe I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm not. But I thought that, let me see something. I thought that was the guy who's running SBI uh, Ripple Asia. I really did. I'm I'm getting distracted. Okay. So I guess uh, this wasn't the actual creator. Co-founder and president. 
who owns Bread Wallet. There is Adam Trayman, founded by Aaron Wazine. Adam Trayman, right? That's the that's the guy who runs uh, SBI Ripple Asia. <laughs> yeah, very, very, very interesting. But in any case, that's the word on the street, and I'll share that with you guys. Bread Wallet Company got acquired by Coinbase. Coinbase has been on a really, really massive company acquisition uh, pace for sure. So look, according to Coin, uh, according to Coin Gecko, the total cryptocurrency market cap is currently two point eight two trillion dollars, up four point nine percent in the last twenty four hours. The Bitcoin dominance is at thirty nine point seven percent. Bitcoin is at $59,129. Ethereum is at $4,513. Binance Coin, $640, up 10% on a seven day. Solana is $215. Cardano is at $1.73. XRP is at $1.06 since Polkadot. And we all remember the news about eToro deciding, making the decision to delist Cardano. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that as well, because, uh, the, the, you know, the likes of people who thought that the SEC or the United States regulators were not going to come after them, were going to be fair, we're, gonna, we're going to be reasonable. It's just you, they're finding out that it's, that is simply not uh, the case. They want to have their coffers filled by these, uh, these companies of uh, Charles Hoskins, Nexo, Celsius. The SEC is looking to get their coffers filled with settlements, right? And then try to claim to Congress that about all these enforcement actions that they're taking and that they should be given more power to regulate the space. That's, uh, that's what it's about. So polka dots, $40.65. Dogecoin is 22 cents. Avalanche is at $123 up 13% on the seven day. Uh, Shiba Unu, 0.0000, Yeah, and it, it, is, it is pronounced Dogecoin. That's for the good old boy network. Terra Luna is $42.51. Litecoin is $227.57. Polycon, Polycon is at $1.90. Up 15% on a seven day. Uh, what do we got? Chainlinks, $27.30. Bitcoin Cash, $623. Algorand is at $1.82. Elrond is at $438, up 40% on the seven day. <sighs> what do we got going on here? Uh, VeChain is at $0.13. Cents. Cosmos, the Atom tokens at $30.65. Cell Lumens, $34.7. Cents. And uh, that pretty much wraps it all up. We can cover Decentraland, $4.90. And uh, Hedera Hashgraphs at $0.36. Cents. That's pretty much it. The Sand Dollar, of course, is doing great from Sandbox. Gala Games, $0.68. Cents. It's up 193 <laughs> 193% uh, on the seven-day. What a blessing that has been. It's just... Let's see what the, uh, let's check out the, uh, <gasps> 511,000 percent gain. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, 509,394 percent gain. Shout out to the new 1% from the Gala Games. Uh, ecosystem. This is here one year is 266,664% gain. What a blessing. Gala Games has been. So guys, listen, the market again is doing what the market does. Wow, 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 wow. All right, let's go over some very, very interesting th news. Michael, Michael at Valve Five Links on uh, Twitter has been con continuing to lay out some great Great information. I hope you have an awesome Thanksgiving, uh, Michael. Thank you for all you do. Thanks for taking the time, energy, and resources to share, to share with all of us. So this is some interesting news coming out of Japan. 
the Japan Digital Currency Forum has released a white paper examining the possibility of a new cryptocurrency backed by bank deposits. Wow. That, my friends, is very, 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 very interesting. According to Forecast News, Japan's top bank looks to launch a digital currency backed by bank deposits. Check out some of the banks involved in this. The forum consists of over 70 companies, including the country's top banks, such as MUFG, Bank, Sum Sumitomo Mitsubishi Banking Corp, Missoula Bank, Japan Post Bank, among others. Can we say SBI? Several government agencies also are part of the project with the country's finance ministry, ministry and central bank acting as observers. Very, very, very interesting is doing it. The digital currency temporarily called DCJPY uh, would be issued by commercial banks as their liabilities. The currency would be backed by bank deposits and not bear interest, the white paper notes. Users would be allowed to mint the, the, the currency by withdrawing deposits from their bank accounts and posting the equivalent amount in DC JPY to a digital currency account. Isn't that interesting? I thought this was interesting as well. The white paper describes the digital currency platform as two tiered. It has a common area where simple transactions are recorded on the blockchain and a business process area for smart contract transactions. <sighs> The forum is exploring uh, is exploring a range of use cases for the currency, including security tokens, retail payments, industrial settlement, and non-fungible tokens, among others. The consortium is said is hoping to roll out DCJPY by the latter half of 2022. In the meantime, the forum will test the digital currency starting as early as this year. Well, it's <laughs> not a whole lot of time left for this year. So that is some very, very interesting news. And we know about MUFG and uh, for sure and, and Mizuho Bank, right? These are, uh, I believe, to be Ripple partners. So this is very, very interesting. You got SBI uh, Ripple Asia. You got the consortium that uh, uh, Mr. Yoshitaka Katao has put together involving a probably 90%, 89% of these quote unquote uh, banks in Japan. So that is really, that are participating in this forum. So that is really, really, really exciting to see, to say the least. Uh, let's see here, let's do this. Here it is right here, leading crypto exchange Coinbase has acquired the crypto wallet company BRD. Intr I, that's very interesting, very, very interesting to me. According to statements from both firms, Crypto Briefing, crypto briefing uh, share with us, uh, the wallet team will continue to, will contribute to Coinbase's Web3 efforts. And this is what, this is, will be the trend, right? Ripple will be doing this and has done this as well. But that's going to be the trend. You get these big companies, they get a chance to IPO, get these big, massive valuations, and they will begin to start acquiring companies. This is very, very, very fascinating. So that you can, can, you can expect to see more of this take place. So here are some key takeaways. Coinbase has acquired the mobile wallet company, BRD Wallet. The team behind the wallet will join Coinbase Wallet to work on self-custody and Web3 integration. Coinbase has acquired, has acquired several other companies in recent months, including uh, Agara, Bison Trails, and Skew, Skew. Leading cryptocurrency, leading crypto exchange Coinbase has acquired the crypto wallet account. Coinbase has statements from both firms, just read that. The BR team will join Coinbase wallet. BRD announced this. Right, that it that its team will join Coinbase, where it will contribute to the company's uh, Coinbase wallet. The app was originally launched in 2014 under the name Bread Wallet ah, and achieved a user base of 10 million. 
BRD suggested that his own wallet will continue to operate normally for the time being, and that users will be given the option to, mig to migrate to the Coinbase wallet in 2022. The team behind BRD will join the team behind Coinbase wallet. Coinbase noted that BRD brings deep expertise in self-custody for crypto wallets and that the acquisition is part of its goal of doubling down on its investment in self-custody and Web3. Very, 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 very interesting. Right, very, very interesting. And so um, I'm sure that was a certain, a certain kind of nice payday. <laughs> but like we just checked, uh, Adam um, and Treadman and Mr. Voizine, I believe he pronounced his name, the founders of the BRD wallet. Adam Treadman, again, he's got, right, he's got multiple kind of CEO co-founder jobs because he is, Adam Treadman is also the CEO of SBI Ripple Asia as well. And, and from what I understand, is doing a pretty amazing job. I don't, I don't get this uh, side note. I don't get this whole Adidas partnering with Coinbase deal, but that happened. In other news, footwear company Adidas also announced today that it has partnered with Coinbase, <laughs> but has revealed few details about its plans. Yeah, like what? It's very, that's very, very 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 interesting and so now look guys we got the thing here coming out of uh, fox business it's pretty extensive regulatory riddle an investigation into the sec versus ripple case and its consequences for crypto the rapidly expanding crypto business is attracting regulatory scrutiny from the sec so this is again this is pretty lengthy okay i'm not going to go over it it's just really you know kind of a, uh, an expanded timeline if you will of all the things that most of us you know we already know a lot of these things here um it, it kind of hints it, it kind of it kind of you know kind of nibbles if you will to kind of expose the 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 you know what is to us the very obvious corruption and collusion and the, and the obvious free hall pass, if you will, that was collectively put together to give Ethereum a free pass, right? That's the right motions put in place, a concerted effort to give the Ethereum blockchain, Joseph Lubin and Vitalik Buterin a free, a free pass. Very, very, very obvious. Um, and again, uh, when we start getting people called into Congress into hearings as to why, which, how did you come to this kind of conclusion for Ethereum and not for XRP when they're very, very, very similar, you start pulling in the ties, you start thinking about these venture capital, venture capital firms who got involved in this. Venture capital firms, I mean, they had the nerve to call it a venture capital working group. Who are the venture capital people looking out for? See, you're looking, you think they're looking out for the greater crypto space and creating a level playing field? Yeah, so I do believe, I certainly pray that they, be, they do begin to an independent investigation of Jay Clayton, William Henman, Joseph Lubin, and Vitalik Buterin, especially Joseph Lubin, and what they entered into uh, and the strings that they pulled. Um, and the fact that these venture, just, it's very, very obvious that these venture capital firms and law firms knew that they were going to be able to be heavily invested in the Ethereum and they wanted to give them the free pass. That is the bottom, bottom line. It was a cash grab. It was to create, if you will, uh, a sort of monopoly over the digital asset space. And what Ripple is pointing to is saying, no, 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 no. It is obvious that you're deciding to pick a winner and pick a loser and not create a level playing field. And you are in fact harming United States investors. And this is what I hope Congress will realize here that the SEC, the, the people with the mantra of protecting US investors decided to harm US investors. And more worse than that, even worse than that is they decided to participate in, in this 
in this backhanded closed store scheme to get a theorem or free pass for their own personal gains. And it is very, very, very obvious that that is what has taken place. And we have lawyers who were involved in these meetings stating, well, why, if, if Ethereum got this quote unquote free pass, why would not rip, Ripple, because it was called Ripple back then, why would the digital asset XRP not also have been given that same regulatory pass, if you will, of not being a security? And you got Mrs. Wochas, um, you know, she did, she, she and according to this here, they asked, Fox Business asked her to comment. She would not comment. You know, we, we have her on video, right? You know, kind of asking that question, well, why wouldn't Ripple? But um, being have given the same free pass, if you will, or, or the, you know, the, the clearance to, to not be a security. But she would not comment here. She would not comment in this because they, they did reach out to her and she wouldn't comment. So that is unfortunate that she didn't decide to comment here, but uh, I hope that um, a further investigation will um, take place here. And John Deaton actually stated, um, if I can find his, uh, his tweet, he actually said that this did warrant yeah. Let's see if I can find his. Here, Elena Tourette, she let us know last night. Here it is, the piece we've been working on for two months and my very first investigative report. As Charles, uh, as Charles Gasparini has mentioned, we've reported the facts fairly and to the best of our ability and made a conscious effort to give everyone mentioned a voice. I have read this independent, unbiased investigative piece by a major financial news outlet, which is objectively fair to all parties. Without question or debate, this piece should lead to an independent investigation by the IG and or Department of Justice. And that is what we hope will take place. This is what we hope will take take place to really seriously look into the and call these guys to the carpet that would be you know the home run crypto law tv <laughs> is pretty funny uh this is a quote from Hinman, or this is what happened was um a spokesperson from the william Hinman camp had this response i had no idea i was being paid 15 million dollars by an ethereum promoting law firm I retired from and then unretired from. <laughs> In crypto law at Crypto Law US, that's John. That is um John Deaton. So uh, what happened there? That's John Deaton's uh company. Oh, here it is. Let's sit, let's sit this. In the case of Bill Henman, according to Fox Business, the former corporation finance chief under Clayton and a key architect of the SEC's past views on crypto, Deaton says regulatory filings show that he received $15 million while at the SEC from his previous law firm, Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett, the same Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett that is part of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Plus, Henman rejoined the firm in his post-SEC career. A person close to Hinman says this money was part of Hinman's pension from the firm. And he had no idea the law firm was part of the alliance while at the SEC. <laughs> and, and John Deaton, I believe John Deaton said, of course he would say that because if he didn't say that, um, if he, if he, of course he said he didn't know, here it is. Think about what this person close to him and said. He didn't know his law firm was a member of the Ethereum Alliance, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, until after he left the SEC. That's when he figured it out. Of course, he will claim he didn't know. If he admitted he knew, he would have to he would have to concede that he should have recused himself. 
Yeah, so that's kind of that, that dirty backhanded closed door nastiness that we hear about. And uh, it's a shame that uh, we're bringing it, you know, this is it's being brought into this new industrial, uh, fourth industrial revolution and this new financial system. Uh, and these, you know, these venture capital firms and these and law firms with big pockets, they see a cash grab and um, they're not concerned about a level playing field in any way, shape, form or fashion. So, but I'm going to end this video on some positive news here. Bank XRP shared this, and I think this is awesome. In August of 2021, Mercury FX, Ripple Partner, and I believe ODL, completed the successful testing of cross-border payments between South Africa and the UK using crypto assets, specifically XRP, completed testing. So between South Africa and the UK, this was done inside the Intergovernmental Financial Working Group regulatory sandbox and you can see right here Murphy Mercury, Mercury what is going on with this laptop here Mercury uh, FX international payments Mercury is testing the regulatory treatment and asks and associated regulatory reporting impl implications and obligations of crypto assets specifically XRP being used for effective low value cross-border remittances between South Africa and the UK. Testing was successfully completed during August of 2021. Zygo Technologies, that's the, I believe that's the Africa uh, company for cross-border remittance, testing the regulatory treatment of crypto assets, specifically X. RP in terms of the South African exchange controls regulations. Testing has been extended another six months. So Mercury's done. Apparently Zago wants to do some more testing, right? So they want to do these tests and these quote unquote regulatory sandboxes under each kind of country's re um, regulations to make sure that it is completely legit. So I think this is absolutely great great news coming from both the Mercury FX and the Zago technology. Thanks, Bank XRP, for sharing this, my friend. I hope you have an absolutely outstanding day today. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. All right, guys, look, I'm going to end this video. Again, happy Thanksgiving to each and, one of, each and every one of you. Thank you again so much for supporting the channel. It, it means a, a lot. It means a ton to me. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, and I will we'll see you guys uh, in the next video for sure. Listen, guys, Old money doesn't want you to win, but that's okay though, because you and I are already winning. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.